And we are live. Hello, guys. Happy Eurovision 2024, start of the season. How are you guys in the live chat? It's been a summer, hasn't it? Let me, guys, introduce you to a new Eurovox member. It's Chris. And Chris, please inter introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, guys. It's lovely to see you all. My name is Chris. I am from North Wales uh, in a small town called Wrexham in the UK. And my first Eurovision was this year in Liverpool, um, where, yeah, I knew I wanted to get more involved from then on in. So, yeah, really happy to be here. How are you, Clara? Oh, I'm good. Um, I'm in Barcelona for a, a work uh, thing. So I'm actually um, quite good enjoying the sun and everything. So, oh, yeah, cool. it's very exciting. Amazing. That's so, cool. Chris, yeah. tell, tell us. What is your favorite Eurovision song? Because you know that our viewers, our friends need to get to know you better and understand your character. So let us know. Of course. Yeah, my favorite Eurovision song has to be Eleni Ferreira with Fuego. I know it's a it's a big fan favorite, but I just think it, it's timeless. Ooh, I like it, and especially with all of the dance breaks we're seeing in these recent years with like Chanel in slow-mo, Blanca with solo, I don't know, like she did create a moment, didn't she, Eleni? She did, yeah, I think she paved the way, didn't she? I think we're seeing more and more mm. imaginative dance breaks each year, so yeah, I think it's only going to get bigger and better from here. Yes, let's go to the live chat and say hello to you guys. Ali Fern, evening all, hey! Hello! Sarah, hello, Sarah Halran, yay! Um, me, because we were panicking because my laptop wasn't working very very well, so, yeah. Hey, Clara! And what are you saying? Hey, what are you saying, Sarah? <laughs> One day at work, UK 1996, ooh, I just a little bit was on and the people enjoyed it. It was awesome. That does sound like an awesome day at work. Yes. I love when you randomly hear Eurovision songs in places that you're not supposed to. So that yeah. makes really. Yeah, there's nothing more exciting. And let's see. Than that, sure. Yeah. Sam, good evening. Ooh, yeah, she says hello, Chris. Hello. Klaus, hey guys, greetings from Latvia. Sveiki, hello, hello. Lifern, hey, Chris. Hello. <laughs> Beckett Fitz, hi all, and um, Iasi Gaga, hello, happy new year, happy new year everyone. That's so, good. Chris, tell us why we are celebrating the new year. We are celebrating the new year because from today forward, any songs that songwriters bring out or any songs that artists make are officially eligible for next year's Eurovision Song Contest 2024. So it's super exciting. Yes, indeed. It's super exciting. Let's see. Yes, Imanga. Hello, Rai Bailey. Hello to you. Hey, Adam Green. Hello, everyone. I'm a mega Eurovision fan. Well, you just found the community, the perfect community for you. And um, you already have some admirers, Chris. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our our friends our friends here are always very supportive of us so i'm glad they are embracing your presence here me too me too i'm glad to, glad to be welcomed into the family <laughs> mm -hmm. okay sarah this is a great topic have you heard about estonia making their junior eurovision debut this year it's a miracle Ooh, i like it i love when um when countries join what whatever it's junior eurovision or eurovision itself so chris how are you feeling about this news absolutely so exciting i think as we all know estonia bring just very unique talent but memorable talent to the actual eurovision song contest so it's going to be super interesting to see well, I mean, they'll definitely bring that to Junior Eurovision, but I think they will bring the same, and I think they will definitely impress at this year's Euro Junior Eurovision. Um, yeah, it's super exciting, and like you said, it's nothing is more exciting than a, a new Eurovision country coming into the contest. So, yeah, something to look forward to for sure. Did you watch Junior Eurovision very often, or recently, or? So last year. Uh, BBC televised it for the first time 
Um, I'm not sure why that was. I think I, I know Junior Eurovision has been going since 2003. Um, and I'm sure our, our viewers can correct me, but I, I think the UK has only been in once or twice in that time. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I did watch it when it was in Yerevan last year on uh, on on television. So it's it's nice. It's it's nice that it's getting bigger and bigger, like the actual contest for sure. Yeah, and I think the BBC confirmed also this year that they're also taking part again. They did, yeah, for sure. They brought out the statement um, just a couple of days ago, um, mm -hmm. and especially after such an amazing contest that the BBC put on in Liverpool this year. Um, it's really nice to see my country embracing it and uh, getting more involved and hopefully getting a, a bit further up the scoreboard as well next year. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess the UK really loved the Eurovision party and doesn't want it to end. Absolutely. Yeah, it was unbelievable this year. Okay, let's pull up some more comments. Hi, Eurovox. Been enjoying your channel, Chris. A long Thank Eurovox, obviously. Oh, so. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Um, yeah, after being in Liverpool for the Plug first... in, plug in your channel. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys didn't know, Chris has an, his own YouTube channel. Yes, I do. So, Chris, let Thank us know. You. Thank you. Yes, you can um, subscribe at Chris Calling. Um, it's my new U Eurovision uh, YouTube channel, um, which you know brings me a lot of joy. And yeah, um, just looking forward to joining in the build up to Malmo 2024 next year. Mm. And talking about the build up to Malmo. Uh, Sarah O'Halloran wants to see a boy band represent Luxembourg. That's nice. And like Luxembourg is returning. I am so excited. It's been 30 years in the making and I'm so happy for the team that made this happen. So I can't wait to see Luxembourg back. A boy band. That's an interesting um, thought. Do they have enough people in Luxembourg to create a boy band? I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm glad you brought that up, Clara, because I'm so glad um, when I think it was such a nice surprise this year when they announced in the live show that Luxembourg was going to be returning. Um, it, again, it's going to be really interesting to see what they bring to the table next year. Um, yeah, I, I just think it's amazing when, when an older country comes back uh, when we're least expecting it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. more in Eurovision, the better for sure. It makes it a fun contest. Yeah, and Luxembourg always struck me as like very classy entries, very elegant and mm -hmm. very uh, from the old days. So now I'm very curious to see what modern Luxembourg sounds like. Me too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I like speaking to a few Eurovision friends. Most people think they will sing in French. So maybe we'll get a new Barbara Pravi next year. Who knows? Ooh, I wouldn't mind. I, I love the whole Barbara Pravi mystique that she had and it would be perfect for Luxembourg actually this sort of mystique yeah of course only needing one person on the stage that can you know you know just deliver that performance yeah for sure I agree yeah and also it's a cheaper budget exactly yeah yeah <laughs> who needs five it's smart it's a smart <laughs> idea to get a Barbara Pravi for, for Luxembourg for sure, for sure. And also, I think like we saw when she competed in 2021, the first three to five uh, finishers in that contest all sang in their own language. So it would be really nice mm -hmm. to have that back in, you know, more more traditional kind of, uh, yeah, uh, songs in Eurovision as well. Yes. Oh, <laughs> the second Chris from Wales who joined Eurovox. Yes, we cast them on purpose. Oh, I was second. <laughs> I see. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tuan, hey guys, hi Tuan. Um, Sarah says, I wonder if Luxembourg uh, will ever make their debut in Junior Eurovision next year. Well, let's see how they perform and how the expectations are met or not met this year in Eurovision, and that might leave the door open to other um, other opportunities for them to perform in other contests. Uh, right, Bailey, work for the... You know, that definitely. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. 
worried for the UK Eurovision next year. Why, right, Bailey? Why are you worried about the UK? Is it because they is the TAP has ended their partnership with uh, the BBC? I think on that one, um, I was a little bit concerned as well when I heard that news. But I think after the most amazing competition that we had this year that the BBC put on, I'm hoping that the BBC have learned a thing or two from tap music and um, the kind of artists that are in, in involved um, and I hope mm -hmm. we'll take inspiration for the years to come. Um, but yeah, that's me being positive. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't, it can't get any Yeah, worse. I know that the whole so. UK... But... Go ahead, sorry, repeat that. I just said, it can't get any use worse for the results of the UK. We've been at the bottom plenty of times, so, you know, anything is an improvement. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's really true. So I remember everyone being so expectant when TAP announced the partnership and everyone started saying, Dua Lipa might participate or something like that. So Sam Ryder was an amazing performer and an, it was a fantastic place. with. May Mula, how did you feel about May Mula's performance and overall uh, voyage to Eurovision, Chris? I think that is the thing. So I think um, a lot of the times when the songs first come out, when we first hear them, they are the radio versions, aren't they? They are the songs that you'll hear on the radio mm. and they're not the live versions. That can certainly differ from what we get in the final result. Um, even though so much work that every participant puts into their performance, it, you know, it could come something down to a technical glitch. The The volume levels might be off that it just doesn't come off on the night. So I was really, really excited for Mae Muller's performance. And I think she, I, I, I might be wrong, but I think she did a jury performance that sounded a little bit better than the actual one that happened in the grand final. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know, I think, this year especially was such a strong year in 2023. I've said it uh, in my own videos as well, but I don't think there was a one bad entry this year in the in the grand final. Um, so yeah, it was a tough competition for sure. She had a lot to compete against. So I, I still think she did really well, um, nevertheless. Yeah, I totally agree. There were so many strong entries this year for me personally. And um, even like maybe the weakest for me was um... Romania and then we didn't sit in the final so the final that the final all of the great songs that had to be there were there so I'm yeah. happy about that even Blanca with solo that completely yeah. blew me away she completely transformed my perception on her so well done Poland absolutely I was just going to say about Spain as well I just thought it was just a beautiful performance and so um back to Spanish roots and I really thought they brought that to the to the stage um and also the the uh, atmosphere in the arena when she was on the stage i thought that it was something really promising so it was such a shame that the uk and spain did go lower down the scoreboard this year they'll be back up there next year for sure yes <laughs> yeah probably probably benidorm fest is returning this year so we will have yeah. more opportunities at least for spain to grow <laughs> their chances oh uh, Lee Fern, this is the fifth time we, the UK, would have participated in Junior Eurovision. So 2003, <laughs> 4, 5, 22, and 23. Cool. Ooh, thank you for that. Uh, but, of course, but of course, Wales competed a few times before that. Nice. Yeah. I saw they competed in uh, the Junior Eurovision before, um, which I didn't even know happened. So, yeah, that was a, that was a funny thing to discover. <laughs> mm hmm ESC flop. Hello, guys. Hi to you. Oh, this is a very interesting question. Would La Tarra be the interval act in Junior Eurovision? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. I mean, it would make sense in a way because it's in Nice in France. So yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. Let's have a back for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, what do you guys think of the artwork of this year's Junior Eurovision? Have you seen it, Chris? I have, yeah. Heroes, the slogan. Have you seen it, Clara? Oh, no, I haven't. That's why I wanted to pass this question to you because I wasn't ready. No worries, that's fine. I think um, when I first saw it, I was, I think, uh, like a lot of slogans that we see, um, it's a little bit of a, oh, how do I feel about that? Like a bit like the one, the one behind me for the, for the UK. Um, there were a few oh, yeah. 
yeah, when the, there are a few funny comments on it. Um, but I like it. I think, yeah, Heroes, it's got a really nice message for uh, a younger audience and definitely gives uh, Junior Eurovision Song Contest entries um, like inspiration and motivation going into the contest. Um, I think they can do, I, I always like, because I'm a Eurovision geek like that, I love when they show all the graphics for the first performances. So like, I think they can do something really clever with all the flags and all like fireworks and stuff. And yeah, I think it looks really professional. Like I say, um, France have hosted the Junior Eurovision within the last few years. So they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to get a really good contest in Nice this, uh, this November. <laughs> I nearly forgot that. <laughs> yes. Actually, Andy and I went to Paris to cover the last Junior Eurovision that happened in France, in, I think, oh, during yeah. the pandemic, 2002. Oh, and wow. they did an, an amazing job. <laughs> oh, God, but yeah. it is true what you say. I remember every time the artwork comes out, at least for me personally, it takes me a little, many, like maybe a few weeks to get used to it and to like embrace it. Because at the beginning, it's like, ah, what is this? I agree. Yeah, for the UK one in Liverpool, I was like, come on, you you, you had your, your creative director, artist create this. And then by the time we got to the contest, I was like, I love it. It's, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we also need to touch on a really important subject or news that came out this week. We have the first Eurovision 2024 act revealed and it's from <laughs> Belgium. Chris, did you know this singer before? No, no, not at all. Um, I wasn't expecting this at all. It seems quite a similar, I, I, I could be wrong, it seems similar to Gustav um, last year, like a similar kind of vibe. Mm. Um, but I think it's just such such an honour for us Eurovision fans to get a Eurovision 20, 2024 participant so early. Um, it's just so exciting. Oh, yeah. I love um, recently the Eurovision social media um, has been vamped up a notch since uh, since Liverpool. They've been like teasing mm -hmm. things more and they've been showing things online that is, yeah, it's just more exciting um, for the forthcoming contest. I think we're in for a treat next year. Yeah, I love it that they, I guess the team knows what the, the Eurovision, post Eurovision depression is and they're trying to help us cope with this with we mm -hmm. did the best uh, they can so for that thank you and yeah. um i think what, belgium think uh, we haven't mentioned the name of the what is it Mut mutsi the artist for uh for yes next year? mutsi yeah. yeah what do you think yes um i haven't heard any of his singing i know he's in drag race i know he's been a judge so I think he's definitely going to have the stage presence, the outfit, like the face and the expression. Um, yeah. I'm not familiar with his music, but knowing this is the kind of vibe he goes for, I can expect something like up tempo. No, maybe not so 90s as Gustav went for, but maybe catering to this drag race audience or ballroom audience. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, like you said, they Belgium did incredibly well. Um, at this year's Eurovision after maybe an initial kind of people didn't think that they would do as well. Um, they completely changed people's opinions and they did amazing. I think they came seventh this year. Um, so yes. I think, yeah, like I say, they know they know what is on trend at the moment. And I, I think they will, they've got lots of time anyway to prepare. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be good for sure. I hope I hope they come up with a dance number because I love uh, yeah. I love these kind of dance numbers with like uh, upbeat songs. And if they have so much time to prepare, I expect something spectacularly, yeah. visually spectacular. They they better they better they better they better bring the party. Ah, uh, we have a comment here. Hmm. May Muller sounded really good when I heard her live in one of the run throughs through the semi final. Yeah, I think it's what you said. Maybe the it's a matter of how she came across on camera because I've also heard her live, and she was okay. Yeah, I just yeah. Didn't, I also had the feeling that the that the vacuum vocals maybe their microphones were higher than the than her or something. It was something with the sound mix that wasn't the best that night. I think with her. Absolutely, 
Yeah, I mean, there's so much to get right on the night, isn't there? I know they have a lot of preparation for for every artist, but it's just being there live this year. You you just realised how much goes behind the scenes of Eurovision and how much goes on on the technical side as well. Mm -hmm. RJ, uh, hello everyone. Hi RJ. Uh, right, Bailey Finland is still the real winner. I love that this is going to be a debate forever and ever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> DJ Sarah, I want to be a superhero. Yeah. Uh, yes, Junior Eurovision was shown on S4C on our Welsh language channel in 2018 and 2019. Interesting. I missed it. How did I miss that? <laughs> uh, Chris, can you actually speak Welsh? I get asked this all the time. So I did uh, exams in school and I can understand it, but I, I haven't spoke it since school. So not fluently, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> nice. It's such a mysterious language for us non-Welsh people and definitely non-British people. Yeah, I know it's definitely really rare now, but um, for example, uh, Ruduin Hoffi Coffee means I like coffee. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's go with the comments again. Um, Sarah says, Ireland, why is this comment not working? Is it my internet gone up? Ireland better win. Ireland better win junior, junior Eurovision. Mm -hmm. Well, gonna, maybe they can. If, yeah. It would be amazing <laughs> to, to have them back. I was just going to say, yeah, it's um, I think Sweden and Ireland are drawing now for the most Eurovision wins, aren't they? Oh, yes. So, yes, it's true. I, I remember like in the in the quizzes you get on the books. It's always like, um, who's the country that has won the most? And it's been always Ireland, but now Sweden, this superpower. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, a junior Eurovision island win would be amazing yeah for sure mm -hmm. oh right bailey you've listened to what's his name again the guy from belgium mutsi i might be yeah mutsi <laughs> you've listened to mutsi's music and he's really good well we'll for tonight we'll call him mutsi as we don't have any belgian people here to correct us and <laughs> i didn't prepare as as i should have uh -huh. Okay, okay. Lee Fern says, what do you think about the semifinals being shown on BBC One again next year? I think it's absolutely fantastic to have the semifinals on a main channel again, or should I say on a first channel? Personally, I think it's great that uh, all, I wish all countries showed both semifinals because that gives every contestant the same fair chance. So for me, it's a win, definitely. Yeah, me too. Completely agree with you there, Clara. Um, again, the listeners will already know that uh, most people, most British people who don't always watch Eurovision only tune into the grand final when it's on BBC One. Um, I think it's on BBC Three, usually the semi-finals where people usually miss it and don't see other great artists that don't get through to the finals. So um, having it on BBC One this year was uh, just a really good move. And yeah, I'm really glad they're keeping it in place for the future as well. Definitely. Right, Bailey says you can will win Junior Eurovision. Oh, fingers crossed. Good fingers for crossed. you guys. Have it back in the UK. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Hi, Clara and team. I think Abba or Agneta will be in Malmö to celebrate Waterloo, especially with the release now of Agneta's album. Coming very... The, Mark, yeah, coming very soon this year. Oh, yeah. I also saw that uh, that Agneta had released a new song. And, yeah. well, it's 50 years since ABBA won, so it would make so much sense if it somehow was. either Agneta or ABBA were there, no? Chris? Just one of them. Just one of them that will do. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, immediately after the contest, they maybe had a, an interview or something where they said, no, absolutely not, we won't be there. But give them time, give them time. And like you say, uh, Agneta's brought out new music. So yeah, maybe with a bit of persuasion, they'll be there just for one night, just for the final. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
one final a day, not one final every 50 years doesn't hurt that much. Absolutely not. <laughs> Sud my Chris Aklara, I think that's Welsh. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Oh, um, so if my, I mean, A means and. Yeah, no, I don't understand it. That's why I've lost my wealth. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently it's hi, Chris and Clara in English. Uh... <laughs> okay, Mark Booker, I have a strange feeling that Luxembourg will do very well in Malmö to 2024. Me too, but Me too. it will be also because they will have, they have, oopsie, they have so much to prove. So Luxembourg now has to prove itself. It has to prove so many things that it has to prove they're worthy to come back. They have to prove that small countries can qualify and they have to prove they're up to date to the current music scene. So there is a lot of pressure on their shoulders. If you were to pick the, the artist for Luxembourg Clara or a kind of like Ooh. song or kind of tune, what would you go for? What would you hope to see from Luxembourg next year? Honestly, knowing um, how, knowing what is the safe choice, I would choose a power ballad and maybe, or like a ballad that mid song just goes up tempo and then there's like a dress reveal, but like classy, not something whatever, like very rehearsed, yeah. very polished, very studied, but yes. the vocals need to be there because I'm not sure what the budget is going to be, I know there's still some reservations from certain parts of Luxembourg. So it has to be a performance that has to convince mostly people in Luxembourg, internal people in Luxembourg to believe in their own candidate. So the vocals definitely must be there because if they just brought something that's just visual, they're just gonna write it off as um, just like a spectacle or like a freak show. And when you're trying to convince a country that has not been on the scene for 30 years, you mm -hmm. need to convince them with quality, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I would love to see a ballad or um, a ballad with a twist maybe next year from Luxembourg. Um, I think they should definitely sing uh, in French. Uh, I think, uh, like, again, I love it when, I love it when countries bring go back to their roots in Eurovision like we saw with Spain especially mm -hmm. this year um it was yeah really really Spanish and I just love that so um yeah I I hope they they definitely take that uh, from you Clara and I, yeah mm -hmm. hopefully we we'll see a ballad for sure yeah and maybe like a staging that is not so Eurovision like maybe not a Sasha Jean Baptiste out of the book because that would translate for me into something very cold because I admire her work, but for a returning artist, or sorry, a returning country, that's also trying to show who they are as a nation. I would I like something that's very home produced. And yes. then maybe in the following years, they can go and hire Sasha Jambaptista or uh, Martin Vietman or someone like that. But for this Absolutely. first year, I would love something super Luxembourgish. Yeah, I think especially this this uh, coming year, it's going to be all about the artist. So it's going to be who is going mm -hmm. to represent Luxembourg. So I don't think the staging should take away from that. I think they should fo focus purely on the artist and their talents, for sure. Because mm -hmm. they have a, a national final, I think. Have I got that right? Yes, they have a national final. They're working on it. So, yeah, hopefully. I mean, yeah. That there's definitely going to be some talent in Luxembourg that they can pick from. So I think, yeah, hopefully we're in for a treat. Yes. Uh, no sad boy ballad from Switzerland again. No, this is not what I mean when I want, when we say probably, this is not what we mean when we say we want uh, Luxembourg to come back with a ballad. Maybe some like Adele-like sort of ballad and not a sad boy <laughs> ballad. Mm. Uh, Hi, Clara. One of my best friends is Spanish and has learned a bit of Welsh. You managed the pronunciation well earlier. I think you would pick it up quickly. Well, uh, thank you. I'm trying to learn Latvian and oh my God, it's hard. It's hard. So really? I'm not sure if Welsh is, yes, yes, yes. I'm not sure if Welsh is easier or harder, but uh, it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's probably similar. Yeah. And like you say, it's 
probably only useful if you're coming to Wales lots as well, because it only does do gets <laughs> Uh, let's see. But worrying that 10 countries still pending their participation, including UK and Latvia. Oh, a bit worrying that 10 countries are still pending their participation, including UK and Latvia. At least we are doing wonders in Basketball World Cup. Yes, I heard you've eliminated or you've won. Latvia won over Spain in basketball today. So, oh, uh, oh Lee so. says, <laughs> Latvian, I'm sure UK has confirmed. I think UK has confirmed. That they will take part in yeah. uh, in Malmo. I'm sure they will <laughs> at some point if they haven't already. <laughs> yeah, and just in case you're waiting for Spain to decide to announce that they are participating or not, their Benidorm Fest in, is in full swing. The preparations are in full swing, so Good. they are definitely participating. Actually, Benidorm Fest semi uh, final night is on the third of February, so we have mm -hmm. a date. Amazing. I've never actually tuned in to all the uh, the national finals religiously in the past. So mm -hmm. this is going to be a first year for yeah getting involved with those as well this next year, which I can't wait for. Yes, definitely. Well, you're not part of Eurovox. You are on all of the WhatsApp groups. You are here, so I don't think you have a choice this year, though. <laughs> uh, let's see what you are saying, right, Bailey? I want. It won't be French. It has to be in Luxembourgish. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Luxembourg has their own language and it's Luxembourgish. Oh, I hope they have a better sort of name that Luxembourgish, because <laughs> Luxembourgish sounds strange. But um, I think it's a mixture of German and French, so mm -hmm. you're not so far off. Plus, the, yeah. I have friends living in Luxembourg and they speak in French most of the time, so I, it's a very easy confusion. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you guys are saying. I do think it was unfair to sack the producer of Benidorm Fest because of one bad result. She also gave Spain their best result since 1995. I think there was more to the story than just that bad result for, for what I've read in articles. I think there was some misalignments with the new management of the television because, you know, Benidorm Fest started because... Uh, the tele the main heads of the spanish television changed so that's also something to have in consideration did you hear about um apparently cyprus have supposedly picked their artist for next year as well oh no that? tell me more no tell me more about it so on a, a particular article um it they apparently um what's the national final called that they were going to do it's called fame fame something fame story or for cyprus i might have mm. got that anyway they were going to no, do, no, but yeah, go. yeah they announced a national final that they were doing for next year and greece apparently again this is all from the article um greece the national broadcaster of greece have complained that they don't want the national final of cyprus to be held in greece so something has happened that there's again it's explained in the article but um apparently cyprus have come back and say no we're not doing a uh, national final anymore we're internal selecting and the artist is chosen so Ooh. maybe we can get a turn from eleni Pereira next year that would be iconic ah <laughs> uh, i would love to see her back Me too. but like if you've come back second when? would you <laughs> If you've come already, yeah. If you've come second, would you go again to your vision, though? I mean, especially after Fuego. What could be better than Fuego? I um, know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like. I, again, I would love to see her. I think we all would. But um, I, yeah, I think she's still got it in the bag. She she brings out so many amazing songs, Eleni. Um, she mm -hmm. still performs live, and yeah, I, I I definitely think she could come back for sure. We will see. Mm -hmm. Oh, what are you guys saying here? Um, Spain deserves to badly. Spain deserves to badly. Song got on nerves. Sorry, right, Bailey? I don't understand. Maybe it deserves to win. I think Spain deserves to win. Ah. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Fame factory. That's the. That's the. 
<laughs> Who will the BBC use to pick their song and artist this year? Will they use another agency? Chris, mm -hmm. what do you think? I don't know. I don't know what they did before tap music, to be honest. Um, I think it was just a kind of a selective team within uh, the BBC who chose the artist each year. Um, mm -hmm. So Clara, there was certainly a change when Sam Ryder was picked. We noticed that difference in, in incredibly. Um, I just hope that they take inspiration from tap music. I, I really hope it doesn't go the other way because um, it was it was just amazing to to see us do well for just one year. Um, so it'd be nice yeah. to see on for sure. Um, but yeah, we've, we have already hosted it now on behalf of Ukraine, so that's enough for me. <laughs> 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 and what a year last year and what a year for you guys to host which was an amazing experience in liverpool and i will touch on that shortly but it was incredible to see your country and my country in turin we always finish last on the bottom places like on the top and we were we were all all, all thinking okay the dry spell has ended we now have we've cracked we've cracked the code and then we went back the next year both of us know, to the bottom yeah. Yeah, and it's not even like that. We still had really quality entries this year. I thought they were really good. Yeah, I so know. yeah, I was kind of surprised. But like you say, one we got one year that was good, so that's okay. <laughs> mm -mm. But Chris, I was in Liverpool. You were in Liverpool. We didn't meet in Liverpool. So I want to know what was the most amazing experience for you in Liverpool. What what was the thing that wowed you the most? I think what wowed me the most was it just being in Liverpool in the first place. We went from uh, Ukraine winning in 2022 in Turin, which was obviously amazing. And I, I just, I love that for the Ukrainian people so much. Um, I was equally as shocked that the UK were uh, chosen to host. And then it was between Glasgow in Scotland and Liverpool, which is only half an hour down the road from me where I live. So I was like, there's no way that Eurovision could ever be hosted that close to me. No way. And it happened. So, yeah, the most amazing thing for me in Liverpool was just the whole atmosphere. I, I didn't know how this country could stage a Eurovision that could compete with, you know, the... Eurovision's gone before, but it was just everything. As soon as you got into Liverpool, all the signs, um, the energy in the Eurovision village uh, next to the water, it was just, yeah, a, the most amazing feeling for sure. And like I said in the beginning, it, it's inspired me to get involved every year for sure. Nice, nice. <laughs> Did you go to Euro Club though? To no. the camp and furnace? It also, God, you have to make sure also, you have to make sure you go to Euro Club next year. I'm gonna get my tickets as soon as I find out where the Euro Club is in Malmo. I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> nice. Uh, right, Bailey says it was BMG before Tap, the ones that selected the artist or got all the artists involved. Interesting. So that's cool yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lee Fern, as long as we don't go back to a national final, because I don't think we can still trust the public enough to choose the song. <laughs> no, I think. I know. No, I think it would just be a bit of a joke act if, if everyone mm -hmm. or the audience picks it. So yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping the, the BBC picks a quality entry for sure. I mean, we chose Scooch in 2007 instead of Cindy. <laughs> Scooch, memorable, memorable. Iconic. <laughs> Ian Will Ian Williams, Liverpool was amazing. I agree. I agree. Lesbian, mighty Reds. I think that's a football reference, maybe. Maybe. Wrong audience. <laughs> wrong audience. If that's a football reference. <laughs> uh, but guys, is there anything left to discuss so far that we can discuss on this first of September? That the season has started or shall we call it a night and wait for more news to roll in what do you think chris i think like i said i think it will be very soon before we hear some new some more news so yeah i think we've heard enough maybe for tonight <laughs> mm -hmm. for tonight this is all guys thank you for joining us and stay tuned because now that the news are definitely going to roll in and if it's not 
Eurovision news is definitely going to be junior Eurovision news. So there's a lot of things happening in the overall Eurovision sphere. So stick with us on our socials, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And we will be back short in a few days for more with more uh, Eurovision news. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed Chris's presence here. You'll probably see him from now on quite often. So Chris, I hope this first live has been enjoyable for you. And watching any guys. final any final words oh yeah thank you for watching guys and thank you for welcoming me to the eurovox family um and yeah mm. i'll look forward to seeing you next time well guys we're ending the broadcast